Finding music for your videos is hard, but I'm here to tell you, at least you're not alone. Seriously, there are just no secret passageways, there's no hidden playlist, there's no one website that has solved this age-old dilemma for us creatives. However, over nearly 10 years now of licensing music, we've picked up some tips and tricks along the way that I think should really help you out, including some that I've never heard anyone talk about. So let's uh, dive into that. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Switch pod. We built a life-size replica stunt dummy of me. Why? Well, I, honestly, we just didn't have any other ideas at the start of the week. And Florence was like, we got to make a stunt dummy. And I was like, no. all right. When we started shooting the sequence of creating Jeffrey, we had like a loose idea in mind of the kind of music we wanted to use, but we didn't know what song it was going to be. I had imagined a song kind of out of whiplash, you know, this fast jazz drums that would be chaotic putting stuff into the shopping cart. But when we got back to the studio here, we had quickly realized, A, we didn't have nearly enough shots to actually create the kind of edit I had imagined. And B, the footage we had shot, especially assembling this dummy, was so silly and ridiculous that we needed a song that reflected that tone. And that's the first tip, which is kind of obvious, but make sure the songs you're selecting actually fit the tone and the emotion of the story you're trying to tell. Just because you like a song or because a song fits like your brand, that doesn't mean it's an effective way of telling stories. So make sure that you carefully examine what the story is you're trying to tell. What's the emotion you want your audience to feel? Now there is a problem that we ran into here, which is that because we didn't know the kind of music that that sequence would require, we spent over two hours going song by song by song through jazz and orchestral and Motown, trying to find the right fit. Which brings us to our second tip. If you know ahead of time what the tone and what the feeling of a video you want to shoot is going to be, it's really worth spending the time in finding a song that feels like it might fit first. That way, on the drive to the shoot, you can have it playing on loop in the vehicle and just getting your head into that mind space of this is what we're doing. I even have friends that'll play the song in headphones while they're shooting. That way they can be feeling out, does this shot match the rhythm and the pacing of the music and also the rhythm and the pacing of the emotion I'm trying to get across. The only real issue with doing this beforehand is that you do need to remain open to changes that might happen while you're shooting. A video that you first thought was gonna be comedic comedic in tone could take a more serious turn. Wow. And you want to make sure you're not cramming that serious tone into your silly song just because you picked it beforehand. Hi, can I please get a uh, McChicken? And make that a, sorry, make that a combo with the green tea. <laughs> hey, all is too far. Got it. Have a good day. Thank you so much, appreciate that. And that brings us to tip number three. Now, I know that it's not always possible to choose your music beforehand, but there are some habits that you can form to help make it easier for you in the future. When you get home from a shoot and all that footage is still fresh in your mind, what I like to do is pull up my favorite music licensing website, and as I'm importing my footage, 
I just start listening to music. So even though I'm not paying full attention to the songs because I'm organizing the footage and building libraries and stuff like that, it's still helpful because sometimes a song will pop up and I'll be like, hey, hold on, this song slaps. <laughs> I think one of the best things that you can do is set aside like maybe one hour a week or two hours a week or 15 minutes a day, something where all you're focusing on is just listening to music. Not listening for any songs in particular or for any project in particular, but just paying attention to, oh, what does this song sound like? Do I like this song or what does this song feel like, because often I find some of my favorite songs when there isn't a specific song or project I'm looking for. I often end up renaming the track sometimes to just pizza video question mark or scary video question mark, but probably it's a smarter idea to just start making folders, start making bins in your editor that have genres of music or ideas of music, because I promise future you is gonna be thankful that you did it. But maybe you watch my videos and maybe you've liked some of the song choices or not, don't really care. Let me just tell you what I'm looking for while mining for music. There are two things that I'm looking for when I'm going into my music search. The first is my own taste, my own personal preferences. But more important than that is actually what my audience's preconceived notions of a song are. So what unconscious connections do they make with a certain genre of music? For example, you might love a song that sounds like this. And that's fine, but you need to be aware that songs like this have been used so heavily in travel vlogs and things like that, that naturally your audience hears tropics, Caribbean, they hear those steel drums, and that might invoke feelings of warmth and happiness, but it also might remind them of the hundreds of other travel videos they've seen before. Or maybe in your edits you tend to love really orchestral cinematic pieces, something like this. And it's fine if you do, but you also have to be aware a song like that kind of sounds like Gandalf jumping over a mountain. <laughs> Maybe that's not the best fit when you're reviewing a cell phone on YouTube. But keeping these things in mind, I think there's two primary ways that I like to use my understanding of people's understanding of music. The first way you can play with this is the obvious way, which is lean into people's expectations of the music. Imagine a thriller or a horror movie and there's that build up and tense music and the audience knows something's about to happen. Now the opposite thing that you can do is use their understanding to subvert the video. So you could take a big epic song like So you could use this in a piece where you've really got to go to the bathroom. And even though your footage may not be as epic and cinematic as Gandalf jumping over a mountain, you can still use that song to invoke those emotions from your audience when you're actually just going to the bathroom and not destroying the one ring that rules the other rings. I should rewatch Lord of the Rings, honestly. <laughs> so when I'm looking for music, I'm looking for both songs that I like and I'm also looking to play with the viewer's emotions, whether that's confirming their expectations or often subverting those same expectations. There is a third way that you can use music, which I think Breaking Bad did so powerfully, which is to actually juxtapose the music to the video. Imagine a chase scene, for example, typical, very high energy, fast paced songs. But imagine what would happen if you flipped the script and you gave it something very classical, something elegant. I think what that can do is actually create a fresh association and then burn the scene into their minds because they were so surprised. Make the fire pole red. My fifth tip actually takes a little bit of practice and musical understanding, but if you can get it right, it is super powerful. And that's to start experimenting with editing your songs. In visual storytelling, the goal is actually to give the audience the exact information when you want to give it to them. But if you end up compressing that visual information in order to fit a verse or a chorus, then you're sacrificing the emotional pacing that your audience is meant to feel. Now beyond just experimenting with chopping up the length and the pacing of a song, you can also experiment with chopping up the actual layers of the song. So with Epidemic, for example, you're able to download all of the stems to a track. And what that means is basically the song's broken up into percussion, melody, guitar. And with that, you can say, remove just 
the vocals because maybe you've got dialogue going on and you don't want your dialogue competing with the vocal track even though the song is perfect for what you're going for. Now, other sites like Musicbed, even though you don't get all the stems, they've got a just fantastic music. Shout out Musicbed, they're also great. You can still usually find both lyrical and instrumental versions of the songs, which still is gonna give you more flexibility when it comes time to chop up the song. Now, I come from a musical background, but you may not. And if you don't, I have a potential solution for you. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for people like you and people like me. It's a place for people that are curious and creative and pretty much anyone that's looking to grow. And while they do have thousands and thousands of photography and filmmaking classes, they also have so much more. For example, they have loads of classes on music production and music theory, which are gonna go a long way in helping you when it comes to editing videos and chopping up songs in order to fit the edit. But more important than that, they have tons of classes that teach the art of creativity. See, in filmmaking, the idea is everything. You can have the best gear in the world and you can know exactly how to use it. But at the end of the day, it's the idea of the video that matters. One class in particular I think you should check out is called The Creative Toolkit. Six Techniques to Spark Original Ideas by Esteban Gast. And what I love about this class is not only does it include exercises to kind of stretch that creative mindset, but it actually goes into the neuroscience behind creativity. Also, Esteban is just a super engaging teacher, so that's fun. I know I've said this before, but I think the most important investment you can make is an investment into yourself, and more specifically, an investment into your mind, into your learning, your brain, your creativity. And so for less than $10 a month, you get access to everything, to infinite knowledge, infinite learning. And what's better is that the first 1,000 people that click the link down in the description are going to get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. So that's $0 for all the classes. It's kind of a no-brainer. Click the link, check out Skillshare, and keep learning. My sixth and final tip is to be aware of when to not use music. See, I know in my career, I've used music as a crutch so many times. But as I've grown and progressed, I'm increasingly aware of the power of just good sound design and how much sound design tells a story that much more even than music often does. And as much as the lack of music is often about silence, it's also about emphasizing those times when you do choose to use music. Those moments stand out that much more and the songs stand out that much more because it hasn't just been a flood of a playlist throughout your entire video or your movie or your video. That music gets punctuated by the silence. Now it's not always about music or no music. Sometimes it's actually about starting and stopping the music at the right moments. And that's something that you're just gonna learn to get a feel for with time. At the end of the day, choosing music and knowing when to use music and when to cut the music and when to use silence and what kind of music to use all comes down to taste and practice. And you're not gonna get it right in your first video. And you're not gonna get it right in your first year. And I don't even know if I've ever gotten it right and I'm over 10 years in. So if you feel alone as you're at the desk trying to find the right song, maybe it's been an hour, maybe it's been a day, maybe it's been a week, just know you're not alone. It's a struggle that we all face. And as much as I want it to go away, I don't think it ever will. As far as music selection resources go, there are all sorts of sites to choose from. I use primarily Epidemic for YouTube and then Musicbed and Artlist for my client videos and my commercial videos and stuff like that. But there's all sorts of other great sites like Premium Beat, Audio Jungle, Soundstripe. They just sent me a package, which is really nice. Shout out Soundstripe. Honestly, they're all pretty good and none of them are perfect. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, um, I would appreciate so much you subscribing to the channel. We put a lot of work into these videos and they're not worth it. <laughs> Is this shirt on backwards? Nope, we're good. Um, thanks for watching. I love you. See you later. Also, that's Jeffrey Driftwood. If you're curious, that's Jeffrey Driftwood. At Jeffrey, we should make an Instagram account. We should.
I just don't know how to edit that. That's because you're a bad editor. Download, 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 download.